Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we are going to be reading True Home Alone Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So, without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. Just a heads up, this is going to be a long one. And the whole story might be a bit hectic because it still terrifies me to this day, even to think about it. But after binge reading multiple similar stories here, I decided to share as well. So the whole thing happened back in summer of 2016. For some context, my parents go on holidays quite often. And I used to stay home alone for two weeks at a time to look after our dogs and take care of the garden in general. I've always been kind of a scaredy cat due to my experiences with being harassed and followed home alone a couple of times. My neighborhood was relatively new at the time, so the whole thing was surrounded by forests. And oftentimes, you could come across some junkies lurking in the forest while walking home from shops. However, despite that, I usually felt very safe in my house, staying with four big dogs and all. Nothing would ever really happen since most of my neighbors were my dad's friends, who were all in the army. For some reason, it gives me this odd sense of safety because who would be stupid enough to try to break in in an area like that? Oddly enough, during that particular summer, a couple of break-ins happened on my street, but my parents still decided to leave me home alone, reassuring me that I have nothing to worry about because I have my dogs and our house is surrounded by a big fence. My fence has little spikes on top, so it's almost impossible to jump across it without hurting yourself. So the first couple of days were fine, Nothing weird happened, except for some thuds that I heard in my garden, but I thought nothing of it since usually it was just some small animals causing mischief in my mom's flowers. It would happen so often that even my dogs would ignore it at that point. Two days passed, and I finally had to leave for the shops, but due to having loads of stuff to do throughout the day, I had to go in the evening when it was getting slightly dark outside. So I went to the shops, got my stuff, and would walk back home through my usual path. People would usually walk their dogs there, so it was quite busy in the evening because it was something in between a park and a forest. So I was just casually walking, minding my own business, texting someone on my phone, when I noticed that some guy I passed suddenly stood up from behind the bench and started walking behind me. But again, I thought maybe it's just someone from my neighborhood that I don't recognize, and he's just walking in the same direction as me. So I exit the forest into a normal road where houses start. I live right at the end of that road. Guy's still walking behind me. I still think that maybe he lives in one of these houses. But no. I get to the last junction where my house is. The guy is still behind me. And at this point, I know he's not one of my neighbors. So my blood runs cold. Luckily, my neighbor who lives to the left of my house was outside watering his plants. And he spotted me as I was walking by and started talking to me who knew my parents were out of town and was clearly concerned why I looked so stressed. So the guy who was walking behind me immediately noticed and just started running away again towards the forest, which ultimately gave me the creeps. He was clearly trying to follow me to my house. I called my parents to tell them what had happened, but again, they told me that I have nothing to worry about. Our neighborhood is safe. I had my dogs with me and so on and so on. So I try to calm down and go on with my things as usual. So, for some more context, whenever my parents are out of town, I sleep in their bedroom downstairs, since I don't want my dogs to walk the stairs in the dark and possibly hurt themselves. That night, as usual, I was laying in bed, reading a book, my dogs already soundly sleeping in bed with me. I suppose they could sense that I was stressed because they usually sleep on the floor around the bed. I heard a thud coming from outside, like a little thud on the window in the room next to mine. Again. I thought it was just little animals, but this one time my dog started growling at the window in my bedroom. Couple of seconds of silence. Another thud. This time on the window in my bedroom. That already made me panic, but I tried to stay calm nonetheless. However, the third got louder, 
each coming from windows on the ground floor. Someone was banging on every window of the house, making my dogs go absolutely insane, running around the house wherever the bangs were coming from. At that point, I was in tears, knowing exactly what was happening. So I got out of my bedroom and walked to the center of my house. The house has an open concept, so I could see the main door. And here's the thing. My main door has a window on it, so you can see inside. So I sat down in the darkness, just a couple of feet away from the door, just waiting to see what was going to happen, hoping and praying that someone will get scared of my dogs barking. But no, I wasn't that lucky. First, I see my dogs rushing to the door, barking at it before there's anything there. But then I see a black silhouette outside my main door, peeking inside and then banging on the little window as I'm sitting there helpless. I moved out of sight, hiding under the table. I got my phone out as I'm still hearing that man trying to break the glass. I called my dad, barely being able to breathe. He didn't pick up. Right. It was like 2 a.m. and they were on holiday. I tried two times more until my mom picked up very confused at why I'm calling in the middle of the night. I managed to spit out. Someone's trying to break in. I don't know what to do. At that point, the man was trying to open the door, banging with his whole body on the frame to the point where my mom could hear it on the call. My dad was frantically trying to call everyone who could come and help me. His brother, my neighbors, my grandma. Everyone was put in a full mobility at that very moment to come here as fast as they could. My neighbors, the same one who spoke to me earlier that day, was the first one to come outside and scare the guy away. He rushed to my back garden, but I was still too afraid to open the main door, despite the fact that I could see the neighbor standing in front of it. I knew that man was still on my property, but back of the garden was pitch black, and my neighbor didn't want to risk going out there on his own and getting potentially knocked out with something heavy. Ten minutes later, my uncle, aunt, and grandma all pull up into my house, and I can see them all outside. My uncle had a key, so he opened the door, letting my dogs outside so they could chase after the intruder. My dogs are hunting dogs, so they're not cute little puppies for strangers. My uncle and neighbor went in the backyard with torches, accompanied by my dogs to check every corner and make sure that it's safe now. I will never forget how my grandma and my aunt approached me when I was clinging onto the chair absolutely in tears as my mom was trying to figure out what was happening on the call. The man escaped through the garden, into my other neighbor's garden. I'm guessing trying to get away from the dogs, but he was finally gone. He did manage to damage the little window on my main door. The glass was already slightly cracked. The door itself got loose on the door hinges. I don't want to think about what could have happened if they didn't get to my house that quickly. Edit. For those who are asking why I didn't call the police, I forgot to mention that the whole situation happened in Poland. That's where I'm originally from. And the police here are not exactly reliable or helpful. So I'm guessing my parents were aware that it would do more damage rather than help. When I was about 12 years old, my mom was working later than usual, and because of that, I ended up being home alone. It was late summer, so 7.30 p.m. it was dusk, but not fully dark. I heard the doorbell go and assumed that my mom had her hands full and couldn't find her keys. I opened the door, and I stopped cold in my tracks when I noticed three males. They said they were from some kind of energy company and asked if my parents were home. I lied and said my mom was upstairs in the bath and closed the door. I quickly sped down the hall and went into the living room, where I dropped to the floor in a panic and crawled to the window to look. I could hear them laughing, and they sounded like a body group of lads on a night out. They knocked a few more times. This is when I started to fully panic. They even opened the letterbox for some reason a couple times. Finally, I heard the sounds of them getting quieter, so I peeked and they were leaving. They never went to another house in the neighborhood, and I have this awful feeling knowing that they didn't knock on any other houses after mine. So, quite a number of years ago, my cousin and I were on summer break at her house playing 007 on the GameCube 
and passing the time when we heard what sounded like broken glass on tile. The TV was up pretty loud, so we paused it, tensely waiting for another sound. Then we heard the sound of flip-flop sandals walking around in the kitchen area. So my cousin called her mom slash my aunt. She asked my aunt, who was a nurse, if she was home from work yet. My aunt was not home and, of course, wanted to know why we were asking. Once we told her, she told us to crawl out the window and run to the neighbors as quickly as we could while she called the cops. The bedroom window luckily led to the backyard just next to the gate, so we got the crap out of there. Fast forward an hour or so, and the cops informed my aunt that there had been an obvious break-in. The window on the back door had been broken, and there was a note left for my aunt. Now, my aunt had recently gotten into a serious relationship with this super nice guy. We'll call him Josh. Well, Josh's ex-wife, however, was not so nice. She had, at some point, followed my aunt home and found where she lived. She then proceeded to break in through the back door, rummage through a bunch of stuff, and leave a horrible note for my aunt. I can only imagine what it said. From what I heard, she was arrested. I'm not sure if any charges were pressed, but she later unalived herself leaving behind a daughter and son, whom I both went to school with. I also later found out that she suffered from severe bipolar disorder and a couple of other things. Tragic, but I'm glad that me and my cousin weren't caught up in her psychotic episode more than what we really were. And it still freaks me out to think about it. I was recently diagnosed with COVID, so I was home alone. The days have turned into a bit of a blur as I've just been resting and repeating. The other night, I heard some groans on our front porch. Our house is old and almost always has something falling apart, so I generally don't think too much of it when I hear strange sounds occur. When I found enough energy to look outside, I thought I could see someone on my porch. I froze scared and crept back into the living room. I phoned my fiancé and my parents, but by the time they had gotten over, no one was there. I figured it must be because I'm sick and just scaring myself. This morning, I woke up to let my dogs out and saw the same person or figure on the front porch. I ran to wake up my fiancé, and by the time I was back, whatever it was or whoever it was was gone. I'm sure I'm being paranoid, but I can't stop thinking about all the times the last couple of months that I thought someone was outside my house. What if they really were? Or maybe I'm just overanalyzing everything based on these two creepy occurrences. I've ordered a ring doorbell, and I'm hoping to figure out what's happening. It's just odd. I lived in the middle of nowhere in the country. The closest house was a few miles away. My parents never let me be home alone, but they had to go get groceries from a town 40 minutes away, and I begged them not to make me go. I just wanted to stay home and play Barbies. They agreed. I was having the time of my life, and all of a sudden I hear both of my dogs barking outside. They only bark like they did when a car pulls up. I'm on the second floor of my home. The front door is on the first floor, right by the stairs to the basement. I look out my window and just stare because I had a sinking feeling in my stomach and start screaming. I see a man walking up my driveway. So I start hyperventilating and crying and wondering how this person even got here. My driveway is pretty long, thank God, but it's covered in trees. He's about 20 feet from my front door and that thing is never locked. So I bolted down the stairs and thankfully got there in time. It was right out of the movies it felt like, because as I was in front of the door locking it, I heard a pounding on the door. Then I heard the door handle trying to open. I book it to the dining room to make sure that the screen door is locked, and I call my dad on the home phone, and he starts swearing. Not directly at me, but like, WTF, blah blah blah. I hear him going through the garage and I'm just freaking out, and he's still trying to open the door. He eventually goes through the yard and seemed to be looking for something. My dog is small, but she's barking a storm. I try to call my closest neighbor who was a retired cop, but of course he wasn't home. 
felt like 30 minutes, but the guy finally leaves and my dad and mom get home. Turns out it was a very, very drunk neighbor. His house was like seven miles away and he came into our yard looking for my dad because he drove his car into the ditch and we live on a tire farm. It wasn't uncommon for my dad to help these people. They were drunk all the time and looked for rides. Anyway, my dad took his gun and went to their house and threatened them to never do stuff like that again. If I remember, they were trying to get into our vehicles too. It was the scariest time of my life. I didn't stay home alone for a long time after that. Even thinking back on it now, my heart races. I don't think he would have done anything to me because they respected my dad. My dad's like six foot five and has anger issues. But at the time, I didn't know that. Edit to add. These people ended up making me a dream catcher in a tribal blanket. They had 10 people living in a two bedroom house of theirs. So I didn't recognize the man. But their house ended up getting raided for drugs or something and two dead dogs were found stacked behind the stove. So maybe they were like 50% nice and 50% harmful. Years ago when I was 11, I was staying home alone with only my little brother who was seven. At that time, it was about 9 p.m., dark and pouring rain, and we were reading in our room, right next to the front door with a big window and open blinds. That's when I hear the front doorbell ring, followed by knocking. I thought my parents had arrived. Strange though that they didn't use the garage or their keys. I looked outside to see their car, but nothing. As I approach the door, I hear a man's voice that was not my father's yell through the torrent. Would you like some cookies? We're selling Girl Scout cookies. I'm shocked at this, considering the weather and time of day. I say nothing. I check the peephole and peer through the side window, only to see that it was not a father with his girl as I expected. My heart dropped. Standing there was just a fully grown man maybe in his late 50s. No cookies in sight, soaking on my doorstep. I can remember the gut-wrenching feeling of having to check the locks while he was right on the other side. For sure he heard this. The two locks were the only things separating myself and my brother from a potential monster. He continued to knock and mention his cookies, as I considered calling the cops. That's when I remembered the blinds were open in my room where my brother was, with the light on. As I turn the corner into the doorway, I see the man carefully peering into our window possibly eyeing my brother, distracted in his book. My heart was pounding now as I began to panic. In a move that took all of my willpower, I quickly turned off the lights and ran over to the window to close the blinds, in full view of the man. As fast as I could, I double-checked all the locks in the house, closed all the blinds, and told my brother to go hang out in one of the big closets in the interior of the house. I didn't tell him what was going on so he wouldn't be frightened, and for some reason I never did call the cops or my parents. I just waited in the hallway until he left. Still, thinking about it gives me the shivers that so many things could have gone wrong that night. My worst fear since is a stranger getting to the unlocked door before I do. This happened to me just last Tuesday, and I can't stop thinking about it. I'll start this story by saying that I'm a 30-year-old female who lives with my fiancé and our two dogs. I have two huskies. One is two, and the other one is four months old. My huskies are not guard dogs to save their life. They don't bark nor howl. These dogs just love people so much. My brother-in-law and friends have walked in on multiple occasions, and the dogs don't make a peep. So anyways... It's 8 p.m. It's dark out. I'm home alone. Fiance had a hockey game. I'm in the bathroom with the door closed and the blow dryer going, so I can't really hear anything going on around me. That is, until I hear one of the dogs howl. I stop the blow dryer and listen, thinking that the dogs are fighting again. Then I hear a faint knock and the dogs are going crazy, barking, howling, jumping into the bay window so bad that I thought they'd break it. I'm thinking, what the crap is making them move crazy like that? Maybe a dog or a skunk? I look out my bedroom window, as it was the closest view to the front door for me. Well, 
lo and behold, there's two men in hoodies standing right at the front door. They start knocking louder. And this time, my two-year-old husky jumps from the bay window to the front door and starts growling and ramming his body into the door. I'm watching this from my bedroom. As the dog jumps into the front door, one of the men jumps back startled, looks at the other guy, and they just walk away. I called my fiancé to get home ASAP. I watched them walk away down the road. They weren't selling anything as they didn't stop at any other houses. I was so creeped out and still am. Thank goodness for my crazy dogs. So this happened to me a few years ago in April, and I still can't shake off how terrifying and strange it was. So I was home alone, getting ready for my 12 o'clock college class that morning, and I opened my blinds to let some natural light in. I glanced out my window to see a man in his mid-30s wearing a baseball cap roaming around my property, with his hand on his hips, walking with a lot of weird confidence. Our yard is kind of like a cliff and it looks over onto our five acres of property down below. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it's a pretty scenic view. I was really confused and thought maybe it was a worker that my mom had hired for our renovations on the house admiring the view. I'm a little uncomfortable at this point because the dude walks to the side of my house out of sight. I head upstairs to see him now roaming around my front yard and my driveway, looking at things, checking out my house, etc. He still hasn't seen me at this point. I call my dad and ask him if we have hired anyone to come by the house, and he says not that he knows of, and he tells me that he's going to call my mom and ask her, and then call me back. I'm waiting for the call when I notice this strange dude's car. It's a white Honda with no license plates, just parked parallel to my front door. The man still hasn't seen me, and he's still wandering around, so I take this as an opportunity to remember that we have a security system and I armed it. So if he did try to break in it would immediately alert the police. If this was some sort of professional or worker, he would have rang my doorbell or knocked at least once. He did neither. Just then I get a call back from my dad saying neither him nor my mom has hired anyone to come by today and that I need to call our local police station immediately. I went back downstairs after making sure to lock every door and window upstairs and called my city's police station. I explained to a woman on the other end what is happening and she decides that she's not going to send an officer out and instead gives me a number to call their emergency dispatch line and told me to talk to them. I call the number she gave me and immediately I get an automated message saying, thank you for calling my town's name, non-emergency hotline. Nobody is available to take your call right now. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. At this point, I'm really irritated because 15 minutes has passed and this weird dude is still lurking around my house while I'm home alone and apparently that wasn't enough to warrant an emergency to the lady that I called at my local police department. I hung up and decided to call 911. After getting in touch with the 911 operator, I was asked a series of questions about his appearance before they would even alert officers near me to start heading towards my house. The whole thing seemed really weird. Nobody was in a hurry to have officers come up to my place when I was a younger girl home alone with a strange man. I asked the officer if I could stay on the line with her when she finally, after what seemed like forever, alerted police to come where I was. She agreed and I went back upstairs to check on the weird guy and he's now sitting in his unplated Honda, either listening to a radio show extremely loudly or on a phone call with someone through his car. It was a very prominent loud male voice coming from his car. Then all of a sudden, I hear the tone you hear when someone hangs up on you, and the operator was no longer on the line. I was really confused when my thoughts were interrupted by an unrecognized phone number calling me. I assumed it was the operator calling back, so I picked it up. Instead, I was greeted by really heavy, creepy breathing. I'm not sure whose it was, but it really freaked me out. I hung up immediately and dialed back 911. I had been pretty calm up to this point but that phone call put me in panic mode. I got on the phone with another operator who already knew my situation and address before I even could explain it to her. She said the cops were on their way. 20 minutes had passed at this point. The dude is still here in his car and the cops aren't. Keep in mind, I live in a smaller town 
so there is no reason why it took the cops as long as it did to come down. Finally, this guy is leaving my driveway right as the cops pull in, and they stop him and ask him a few questions. A cop then comes to my door and hands me a sketchy looking flyer saying it was just a landscaper. He said he had an appointment. I was really relieved and irritated that it was just a dude my mom had hired until I realized that it wasn't. I called my mom back and said, the cop said it was just a landscaper that you hired and that he had an appointment. My mom replies with, I can assure you, we never hired a landscaper. We don't even need one. This happened when I was 13. I lived in a duplex with my dad and my brother. It was a two bedroom and I shared a room with my dad while my older brother had his own room. It wasn't uncommon for both of them to have plans at night while I stayed home to play video games alone. This night was no different. My dad was probably at some bar and my brother who knows where he was. I was playing the original Resident Evil on PlayStation and at around midnight my eyelids were getting too heavy so I decided to go to bed. I slept with my bedroom door wide open. Now, not one time in the years that we lived in this place did my dad or brother come home by entering through the back sliding glass door. A couple of times, my brother didn't have his key for one reason or another, and he knocked on my bedroom window and asked me to let him in. My dad always had his key and would always come home through the front door. On this night, I heard the back door slide open. It was an old door, and sliding it open wasn't easy. It was also very loud, so I heard it crystal clearly. I lay in bed, wide-eyed, my imagination going crazy. I heard whoever it was walk through the dining room, through the kitchen, and then into the living room. They made no attempt to be quiet. After a brief silent pause, I saw someone walk by my bedroom doorway. This scared the living hell out of me as you can imagine, and my heart throbbed. Whoever was in my house walked into the bathroom right next to my bedroom and flipped the light on. The light poured into my bedroom and I was laying there, terrified, completely exposed by the light from the bathroom. Why didn't I shout for my brother or my dad? Because like I mentioned earlier, I knew it wasn't them and there was no one else it could have been that would have made sense. Not a family member, not a friend. I knew it was someone that didn't belong. The person then walked out of the bathroom, left the light on, and went into my brother's room and started making a ton of noise. It sounded like they were searching for something. All I did was lay there shivering. After a few more minutes, the person walked by my bedroom again. I expected at any moment a stranger would walk into my room, but they didn't. I heard them making noise in the living room, walking around huffing and puffing. Then they started walking back and forth by my bedroom repeatedly into the bathroom and back out over and over. At this time, I was 100% sure that they were messing with me for some reason. They knew I was there, whoever they were. I heard the person making noises. By this and by the huge figure that I saw walking back and forth, I knew it was a man. They continued walking around each room except the one I was in, and then suddenly I heard them walk back through the house to the back sliding door, open it, and then leave. I lay there in bed terrified, wondering what the hell just happened. After a while, out of sheer exhaustion, I fell asleep. In the morning, I found that my dad and brother were home. I've always asked both of them dozens of times, and they both promised that it was not them. Plus, again, why the hell would they go through the back door and then leave again through that same door? This was 21 years ago. I'll never know who it was or why they were there. Nothing was missing either. What really makes me wonder to this day, why the hell did they never come into my bedroom? The door was wide open and they walked by it at least 20 times. So I've had quite a few bad experiences with strange people in my house. From when I was young, an old man would come banging on our door late at night, demanding to see me, causing me to have to hide in the house and not be allowed into my garden alone for years. 
or when a man came knocking on our door late at night with a knife because he mistook our house for my neighbor's. These experiences all caused me to be very cautious about opening the front door to anyone or even being in the house alone, especially at night. But one evening was definitely the worst. It was around 6 p.m. in November of 2018. I'm from England, meaning it was already pitch black outside at this time of the year. I had just got home from work and was sat in my room upstairs watching YouTube on my laptop. My mom shouted up to me that she was going to pick my brother up from work and would be stopping off at a petrol station on the way home. So she'd be gone for a little while and asked if I wanted to come. I just said no and carried on with my video. I heard her close the front door and pull out of the driveway. I was 17 at the time, so being home alone at night was nothing new to me, and I was used to the eerie feeling of it. But after around 10 minutes, I started hearing noises coming from downstairs. At first, I thought nothing of it, and just related it to my cat noisily searching for food in an empty bowl, until I remembered him sitting at the end of my bed. I paused my video and listened more at the sound of banging on the back door. This instantly creeped me out until it was followed by the sound of keys jingling. And I just thought, oh, my mom must have just dropped my brother off before going to the petrol station, and now she's just trying to go outside. So I let the noise continue as I kept watching my video. He can get quite angry sometimes, so the loud banging was nothing out of the ordinary. But it just kept carrying on, banging and the sounds of keys jangling, then dropping, then banging again. Then the fear really hit me. I don't think it's my brother. I walked out of my room slowly and sat on the stairs listening carefully to the noise. It definitely wasn't him. I'm a very anxious person, and everyone gets those times late at night when they hear noises and immediately think the worst. This is just one of those, I told myself. So I decided to bite the bullet and just walk straight into the kitchen and face whatever it was causing the noise. Our kitchen has the door straight to the garden, but as I turned the corner into the kitchen, I heard a loud bang and clatter of footsteps run away. The cat flap had been ripped off the door, and there was a plastic from it everywhere. In fear, I still tried to console myself into thinking that it could be anything other than people breaking in. I sat back on the stairs and called my mom, just to check again that it wasn't my brother home early and just in a bad mood. But then he answered my mom's phone while still in the car. Are you at home? I shouted at him. No. Then my voice started to break with terror. Please be serious. Are you at home right now? No. What do you want? Even though he said he wasn't, I still begged in my mind that he was joking just to get a scare out of me. But he heard how scared I was and began to worry. I explained to him what happened and he started to scream at me to call the police. He's never been the protective type, but I could tell now that he was really worried and told my mom to rush back home straight away. While dialing 999, I tried so hard to stay calm. I told them exactly what was happening as I hid back in my room with the door tightly locked. Then I heard talking and the banging of doors again downstairs. They were back. I burst into tears to the dispatcher out of pure fear and sat on the phone for what felt like forever until my mom, brother, and police all pulled up at the same time. Everyone charged the house to the back door and we instantly saw what they'd done. The people saw the keys to the back door on the side of the kitchen, took a broom from outside, broke it in half on the door handle, got the broom through the cat flap, knocked the keys off the side and pulled them through the cat flap. Although out of pure luck, as they broke the broom in half, they also managed to snap off the door handle, making it impossible for it to be opened from the outside. Otherwise, they would have gotten in no questions asked and I would have been sat quietly in my room completely oblivious. It was clear afterward that they had been watching the house for a while, waiting until the exact moment that they saw my mom's car pull out of the drive. I'm not sure if they knew that I was there alone or not, but I know that after they initially saw me and ran away, they made the conscious choice to come back. So this happened to me two years ago when I was 18. I need to set up the scenery of my house so that the location makes sense. I live in an upper middle class neighborhood that resides in the middle of a golf course. The course wraps around and intertwines with the neighborhood. 
I live in one of the most remote locations of this neighborhood, where we have no access to a main roadway. Furthermore, our house is a two-story on about one acre. On the first floor is a kitchen, bedroom, office, and living room with a couple of bathrooms. The second floor is just a couple of bedrooms, along with bathrooms and a room that we use for social gatherings. Along the back of the house, we also have a deck with metal and wicker furniture. Now that the setting is out of the way, it was on a rare Sunday that I had gotten off of work, and I wanted the day to relax and not go anywhere or do anything. My parents knew that I never really got days off, let alone a weekend day off, so they were okay with letting me stay home when they went out of town for the day. They decided that day they were going out of town to shop at a nearby mall and wouldn't be home until late. Honestly, I don't remember where my brother was. But anyways, it was a pretty normal day by myself. A lot of nothingness was accomplished until it got dark. I decided to come out of my room and watch TV in the living room, since my new dog wasn't accustomed to stairs yet and would hardly walk up them. So sitting on the couch, I noticed my pup growling and the hair on the back of her neck standing up. For clarification, at this point it's around 11 p.m. and I cannot see outside at all. I try to calm my dog down, but she's getting really hyper. I'm getting anxious now too because something is really upsetting her. So I walk upstairs and pick up my BB gun that I have in my room. I figure if someone is out there, I just have to stand inside with it and hope that they think it's real. Well, after coming down with the BB gun, I take a step over the baby gate that we have to keep our pup from peeing on the carpet and I hear a tapping. Someone or something is tapping on the glass window next to where I was sitting, and my dog had hid behind my legs. I lifted the BB gun up, acting like I was going to shoot, when I saw through the window a figure jump over and off the deck railing. I quickly called my parents. Yeah, I know, I should have called the police, but I wasn't thinking. Well, around midnight they got home and turned on the deck lights. We instantly noticed that one of our metal chairs were pulled very far out of place and positioned to look inside the house where I was sitting before. We never did call the police about that incident, but when I was coming home from work about a week later, I pulled into the driveway around 10 p.m. where my headlights lit up a person hiding beside a tree. This was a full-grown adult wearing a long black coat in the middle of June. We did eventually call the police about that, and I have an inkling that it was probably the same guy. So my husband Ted is in the military. We've generally lived on base at every station that we've been to because the surrounding towns can be crime ridden and sketchy and with my husband gone most of the time, the extra security is appreciated. I work from home due to us moving so often. So one afternoon I was taking a break, had made a bite to eat and was snuggling up on the couch with my dog. That's when I heard the sliding glass door open. It was so nonchalant that I thought it was Ted. I saw my cat run from the kitchen and a shadow standing near the door entering it. I thought maybe he had come back for something, so I called out for him and was like, what are you doing home? Did you forget something? No answer. This is where I just got an eerie feeling. After I asked what he was doing here, I saw the shadow move and heard the click of the sliding door lock. From there, he walked to the laundry room and shut the door. I still have had received no response. So I'm sitting on the couch, scared out of my mind, and I call my husband hoping to hear his phone in the laundry room. I don't hear a ring, but he answers. I asked him why I came home, and he didn't answer me. And all he says was, that wasn't me. Grab the dog and get in your car. I freak out. After getting off the phone with Ted, I grab the dog and run to my car. From there, I call the military police. Waiting for them was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. When they got there, they cleared the house and found no one. They asked me to make a statement, and even they were baffled that someone would try this on a base. We still live here, and I am so scared that he will come back. After reading two stories about hero dogs, it reminded me of one of my encounters that my own dog saved me from. This happened in the early 2000s, 
and I was around 12 years old. My dad had passed away about two years before, leaving my mom, sister, and myself. To help me cope with my father's passing, my mom took me to the animal shelter to pick out a dog, since having a large dog was something that I always wanted. In one of the cages was a small shepherd husky huddled in the corner that I right away fell in love with. When this incident happened, he was about one year old, 90 pounds, and my best friend. My mom worked nights, and my older sister, taking advantage that my mom wasn't home, would constantly leave me alone. I didn't mind, though, because then she couldn't boss me around, since when she was home, she would try to be mom, telling me what to do and when to go to bed. We lived in a small, middle-class suburb with a low crime rate that I wasn't scared to be home alone. I was sitting in the living room, playing video games, and I got up to head to the kitchen to grab a drink. In the kitchen, I had a clear view through the back door and could see the garage open. Thinking that I just left it open after putting my bike away, I headed out the door to close it. My dog was sleeping in the basement since he liked to lay on the cool floor during the summer months, and I didn't think to take him with me. I step out the door and make it about five feet from it when I notice in the darkness a crouched shadow moving in the garage. I froze, trying to get my eyes to adjust to make out what the shadow was. It finally hit me when I saw the figure stand up and turn towards me. I was terrified and felt like I had been glued to the spot. I knew that this person could see me since the back porch light was shining above me. At that moment, the figure started running towards me. I was too scared to move and let out more of a yelp than a scream. But that, but that was all it took for my dog to hear, and the next thing I hear is him behind me snarling and growling. I could make out that it was a man, but no features. When he now froze, seeing this 90-pound beast behind me, he turned and ran for the back fence with my dog right behind him. The guy made it to the fence, and since it was only about four feet high, he hopped right before my dog got to him. After he got away, my dog came running back to me, and we went inside where I barricaded the doors. I don't know why, but I didn't call the cops and never told my mom or sister what happened. One thing that bothered me was that he had to have known that I was inside since the lights were on and the blinds were open. So why take the risk to hit a house when someone was clearly home? The next morning after my mom was home, I went outside to finally close the garage and noticed that what he had been going through was my dad's toolbox. I locked up the garage and never told anyone about what happened. I walked my dog to McDonald's and got him a burger and ice cream cone for being my hero. This happened just over two years ago at the end of my first year of university. I'm female, and at the time I was 21. My university is in a very large city, and I was living in university accommodation, a short walk away from the main campus. My flatmates had all finished their exams and gone home for the summer, so I was alone in my flat. I was pretty stressed because I was in the middle of my first round of university exams. I decided that it wouldn't be prudent to waste my precious study time cooking, so I ordered a pizza from a large pizza chain. It was about 8.30 in the evening when my pizza arrived, so it was on the verge of getting dark. My block of flats had a key card entry system, so the pizza delivery guy couldn't come right to my door. I saw his car pull up outside. As I mentioned, this is a big chain, so their cars are really easily recognizable, and I went downstairs to get my pizza. The delivery guy stepped out of his car as I walked over. He was tall, stocky, and looked to be in his late 20s or early 30s. He handed me the pizza box, and I said thanks and made my walk away. The delivery guy, however, had other ideas. You're very pretty, he said. I wasn't sure how to respond, so I said thanks again. Then, and almost disconcertingly, he asked, Are you home alone? This set up my creep alarm right away, so I told him I wasn't. However, my order was clearly meant for one person and I was in a largely deserted block of flats at the very end of the school year, so he could have deduced pretty easily that I was lying. I was thoroughly creeped out by this point, so I turned around to walk back to the door of my flat block. As I walked away, he wolf whistled and called after me. Wow, nice butt. 
As I walked up the steps, he continued to whistle and whoop and generally be as inappropriate as possible. Needless to say, I closed and locked the door of the block of my flats, and then the door of my flat, and then the door of my room. Had this happened more recently, I would have called the pizza place right away to report the incident, and I wouldn't have eaten the pizza either. At the time, though, I wasn't in my best state of mind, so I ate my pizza and put the whole incident to the back of my mind. I felt pretty uneasy about the fact that this guy knew where I lived. Moreover, the other residents of my flat had a bad habit of letting strangers in, which made me even more uneasy. The next few days passed without incident, and I finished my exams and went back to my parents' house for the summer. When I arrived home, I decided at last that I ought to call the pizza place to report the creepy employee. I did, and the young woman who answered the phone sounded horrified when I explained the situation to her, and immediately gave the phone to a manager. He took the details of my order, presumably so he could ascertain who delivered the pizza, and apologized. I never heard anything back from the pizza place, but I hope that they have a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to their employees creeping on customers. I've been on Reddit for about two years now, but I just now found this subreddit. After reading a few of the top posts, I realized that what happened this summer to me is a perfect fit here. I haven't written anything in a long time, so sorry if this isn't the most articulate post. This really messed me up for a while and I'm still not completely okay, but it's easier to cope. It was the middle of summer and my parents had left for the weekend to go to our house in the Cape Cod. It's about a two hour drive away so it's no big deal for them to leave with me alone for a few days. My mom had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up to eat whenever, and I had some money if I wanted to order a pizza. Things were all good. The first night I was alone, I stayed up until 3 in the morning playing Xbox, so I woke up really late the next day. I checked my phone when I woke up, and I saw that it was a little past 1. I had made plans to play some street hockey with my friends at 3, so I threw myself out of bed and stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers, so when my parents are gone, I go mental. I was in there for about 45 minutes on my phone scrolling through Reddit and Twitter and whatnot when I heard my front door open. The bathroom is directly up the stairs from the back door, and that thing is pretty loud when it opens and closes. I immediately froze, since obviously I was supposed to be alone. I waited for about two minutes, ears trained in, trying to hear anything else. Nothing. I figured it was just the wind or maybe my parents were home early, so I turned off the shower, wrapped my towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. So the stairs to the kitchen are pretty tight and walled in, so I can't see into the kitchen when I walk down. Even though my house is old as crap and each step on the stairs makes a super loud creak, I still took my time and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took 45 seconds walking down all 12 of the stairs. So when I get to the second to last stair, right before I could see around the corner into the kitchen, I take a little breath to compose myself. In my mind, I knew I was being stupid. There obviously wasn't anything in the kitchen. There's no way I wouldn't have heard another noise, and there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if there were burglars or something in the house. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckled to myself for being so stupid and just normally walked the last two stairs and turned the corner into the kitchen. Standing about two feet away from me in the middle of my kitchen is a man staring straight at me, perfectly still with a massive smile across his face, just staring at me. The thing I remember most vividly wasn't his face or his smile, but his arms. They weren't just at his side. He held them in the strangest, most abnormal position I've ever seen. They were where one would normally hold their arms, but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed, as well as lifting them up and a little behind himself. I don't know why I remember this so much, but it's just the most demonic, abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back, I can realize how creepy this situation was. But in the moment, I just took a step towards him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw, sort of half slapping slash pushing him towards the ground. The second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen with my heart beating out of control. 
I sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I quickly put a chair up against the doorknob like you see in TV. Almost without thinking, I immediately called 911 and nearly in tears told the operator what happened. As I sat on the floor of my room in practically the fetal position, staring at the door praying that a cop would be here soon, I noticed the light coming from the gap between my door had stopped. He was standing outside of my door. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralyzed with fear, watching the shadow across the bottom of the door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, praying the man would go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while, the 911 operator was asking, Hello, sir, are you there? Hello. I didn't want to make a noise, and even if I wanted to move my arms to bring the phone to my mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually, the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest of footsteps slowly creaking the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for minutes as I just sat there curled up, unable to even speak. I heard banging on the front door and the sound of two officers entering my house. I finally felt safe, and I opened the door to the two of them standing there. I almost cried. Nowadays, my parents don't even leave me home alone anymore, thank God and I check every lock on the house before going to bed. I still get nightmares occasionally, and my heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still, but I'm doing all right. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups, the police never found whoever was in my house. That sends shivers down my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street, smiling under a lamppost. I have no idea what he wanted or who he was, But regardless, this event has scarred me. I was 14 at the time of this story, so keep that in mind for context. I sat on my bed, in my house, on my own, as usual. My parents were going to be out for the night and we lived in a peaceful area, so even the strictest parents would have let their son watch over the house. As I was on my laptop watching videos, I hear a knock from the door. Mind you, this was 2 a.m., and I was already paranoid from my previous experiences. There was no way I was going to answer that door, but my curiosity was piqued. Since my house has two floors, there was a window right above the door, which I could pull the blinds up to a slit to see who was at the door. My porch light was on, so light wasn't too much of a problem. Even though my paranoia peaked, I had to look to see who was outside. When I looked, there was nobody. I was about to just place the blind down when I saw someone under the light at the end of the cul-de-sac and almost jumped backwards. This person was in a conveniently suspicious looking hoodie and tracksuit with no light showing his facial features. His arms were to his sides and he was staring directly at me. It was weird. He didn't move at all. He just stood there under the light. After what seemed like 10 minutes, he had just turned around and walked into the darkness of the main street. I sighed and went back to watching videos. Perhaps he was just some weird guy who came from the train station near my house. I had no idea, but any justification was better than the alternative. Eventually around 3 a.m. I fell asleep. I woke up at about 4.40 to the sound of my dog silently growling behind me. I thought it was because he wanted to go out in the garden, so I turned around and froze in terror. The person from the street, he was in my doorway. No light hit him from the front, and so even then I could only make out an outline of his face. We had another moment where I just stared into the void which was his face, only for him to break the silence with advice, which seemed silly at first glance, but I have forever took to heart since. Lock your back door. And as he did last time, he turned around towards the stairs, and with me still frozen in place, left my house through the back door. When I wasn't frozen stiff with fear, I sprinted downstairs and got to the back door. He was in the garden. I could only see his outline. He stayed still for a moment, only to sprint off into the woods. I never found out who he was. I didn't care to tell my parents what happened, and yet to this day, they still ask why I insist on keeping the back door locked. Honestly, I believe he was a warning. If he had been an unstable psychopath, I wouldn't be here right now. 
considering some experiences I have had since, I say locking your doors, even in peaceful areas, is great advice. So, 2 a.m. security checker, thank you. Even if your intention was bad, I still learned something from you. Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope you enjoy the extra rain at the end. I hope that you all get an excellent night's sleep, wherever you are. Good night, everybody, and I'll read to you again in our next video.